Hi, welcome to the X Fan Show. This is the A Train. I hate the state of Texas. Hi, it's dirty. Eleven and one. That's all I got to say about that. Damn. When the beat go, I felt that. Hey. Ooh. Hey. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, pull up to the zoo and then I. I'm untouchable. I'm untouchable. I'm untouchable. Touchable. I'm untouchable. I'm untouchable. I'm untouchable. Yeah, yeah. Eleven and one. Arlington is four and you're four and eight, bro. Four and eight, homie. Hey, I'm eleven and one. I got one thing to say to you. That you leave me alone. That's that to you're everybody. terrible. I'm un- Leave me alone! Dirty's Leave. untouchable. Leave me alone. Yes, he is. Like the Leave Huxtables. I'm untouchable. Yeah. Leave I'm me untouchable. Alone. Like Leave the me Huxtables. Alone. Leave me alone. What do you mean, bro? I love you, pal. Leave me alone. Oh. Actually, bro, if I'm not mistaken, okay? Leave me alone. You are four and eight. Four and eight. Leave me alone. Leave me alone! I told you, leave me alone, dude. It's been a rough week. As you can see, I'm I'm rocking my Michigan Panthers hat today. Yeah, because that's the only team you picked. Oh, <laughs> no. you didn't pick that team. I didn't pick that team. You picked that team. <laughs> I didn't pick that team either. No, so, you no, did not. I, I did not. So, yeah, it's going to be a rough week for the kid today. Yeah, it's going to be a very rough week. But Arlington, with yes. that being said, I'm go- let's let's get it out there right now and all of that good stuff. Uh, hello, idiots. I'm tired of hearing about attendance. I'm tired of hearing about TV ratings. I'm tired of hearing about all of the BS. Let's get over it. Let's enjoy spring of football that we have it. It has been doing very good. Listen, we do realize I don't care. (laughs) Hey, uh, what, what, what did Jersey, how did, how did, uh, how did JT key go? How did he go? Oh, that's right. He was a loser. Shut up. Shut up. Uh, But look, I, I, look, I'm going to say this. So I found a great article right here on uh what is this? Anthelon Sports. Okay? Athlon Sports, yes. Athlon Sports. And it is written by the great Mike Mitchell. Everybody knows that you know Dirty's had his issues with Mike Mitchell, but I love Mike Mitchell. I respect <laughs> Did you Mike call Mitchell. him Mike Mitchell the Great? Did you really do that? I did. I did. What's up, Wyatt? I did say Mike Mitchell the Great. I don't like a lot of people. I just respect people. And Mike Mitchell just happens to be one of the guys that I feel to respect. In this entire spring football thing. Like, I like you, Arlington. But, uh-huh. you know, you're like my brother, so I don't respect you because we fight all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it's just that simple. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, hey. we, we fight all the time, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. So let's get to it, Arlington. Let me show you we guys got, We that. got highlights. Yes. We got highlights too, so just letting you know, we'll have. We some do, of those. but I want to get this out of the air right now. What is up, Excalibur? Why it says what's up to the A train? All of that. Here it is. <clears throat> this is courtesy of where is it, Arlington? Courtesy of what? Athlon, Athlon Sports. Athlon Sports. The twenty, the UFL twenty twenty four on Fox, ABC, ESP, and TV ratings. The TV ratings are in for the week three of the UFL. Could this league continue to put up formidable viewer numbers against stiff competition? So, Arlington, we're not really going to get into it, but let's just get some key points. The four UFL games from last week and week two averaged 88,400 or uh, 8,042, 842,000. I've had a lot of coffee this morning. 
uh, a thirty-eight percent jump over the viewership from a year ago. Okay. However, the questions surrounding the UFL as the season resumes: Will the league remain? Will retain its audience moving forward? So here is the breakdown. Now. We are starting to now, mind you, this streaming numbers don't include. This is per Nelson. Uh, Saturday, the Defenders versus Arlington. What a bore fest game! But if you watched it, you really missed a barn burner. It because wasn't a, it wasn't a bore fest. That first game was yeah, not. It, it wasn't a bore fest, but that's beside the point. Um, no, they only had five hundred, and now this was on ESPN, mind you, right, right. here. As you see, I highlighted ESPN. Right. They yeah. had five thousand. 534,000 viewers. Jesus. Now, mind you, that game went up against the Buckeye Spring game, which it had did. which had 660,000. Did the it really? NF, the, yeah, it's right here. The numbers right here on Fox right here. 660,000. Okay. Now, they had the NHL on ABC, college softball, and premier soccer on NBC. But most importantly... The tail end of the telecast went head to head with the Masters. Now, we see a big jump as it comes later in the evening with the Memphis Showboats on Fox going against the Birmingham, which boy, Memphis. Oh God, I love Memphis, but man, they got smacked. They got smacked, Arlington. You see your boy popped up, right? Who? Who? Oh, yeah. We're gonna and we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about his thing. We're gonna talk about his article that he wrote, which is a great article. Go check it out. Uh, because I got a lot of points to talk about that. 837,000 for that game. Now, they had the NHL on ABC as their main competitor, okay, which did 870. Well, that game averaged, which was Boston and Pitt, which is a huge rival, 1. Yeah. Billion, million, and then the Islanders and Rangers at 877. Now, Arlington, let's break down Saturday. Okay. Not bad numbers for a startup league. Hey, as a matter of fact, because it was like that, this is how the game looked. No. Get up, get up. Hey, Osmond, here we go. But they have Turn not up, been able up. to capitalize. Perez floats one to the end zone. Touchdown! Tyler Bonds! His sixth catch of the game. Both backs in the backfield, Higgins and Harris. To Amu. Floats one to the end zone again. It is caught. Is he in? No. They'll say incomplete. Brandon Smith again and Darren Evans in coverage again. Oh, what a throw, though. He threw it to the space in the area that is that? needed. Smith made the throw, but was he able to that? hold on? Did he juggle that football? Remember, no super challenge available for D.C. I could have been Hunter Sorry, back there as well. He's a speedster. <laughs> in the end zone, Lindsey Scott Jr. To go! To Harris. Let's go. Trying to push his way in. Is he in? This one from 49 for the win. The kick is up. It is good! DC! Oh, man, good, good, good job, good job. 29, 28. The defenders avenge their loss last. Not again, an exciting game. It was a barn burner, game. baby. Right now, we're not going to show the Memphis and uh, we're not going to show the Memphis and Showboats or the M Memphis and Birmingham because whew, why not? Because that was bad, Arlington. Do we really want to rub it into Memphis? Sure. Why not? Oh, God. All right. So, well, you say that. That game got huh? 800 and... What did it get? 837,000. So let's show some Every clips of that game. Motion. Let's see if they hey, give it to him. Marable in motion. <laughs> Looking tipped. Oh, and caught for the touchdown. Deflected right into the hands of Jay Sternberger. Pressure coming. Completes it, Vinny Pagali, and it's tied. Touchdown, Memphis. And so they don't have to think so much. They just play fast, and they're showing it. Martinez. Over the middle. 
Down the sideline. Touchdown, Birmingham. Marlon Williams with the score. First to go from the five. Ricky Person tiptoeing into the end zone for the touchdown. Two scores so far. Ready, team. And showing off his legs for the touchdown. Two through the air and now one up. Yeah, it was a one-sided affair. Hey, you know, listen here. Birmingham looked like they were they were stealing Cadillac converters so fast the way they were moving down that line. The way the way they were moving down that field on the <laughs> on the Memphis show boats. I mean, it was like they were up underneath that car, cutting them and grabbing the converter and gone. That's how fast they were moving. Uh, but anyways, so not a bad for the a, a Saturday. A Saturday. Not bad at all. Okay. So now let's move to a Sunday. Sunday. So we got a little more things here. So, you know, okay. So on Sunday, you had the Houston Roughnecks versus the Michigan Panthers at noon on ABC. They did 974,000 viewers. And the St. Louis Battlehawks and the Brahmas, possibly the biggest game so far of this year, did one. I, now I got to eat crow. Um, uh, uh, a million. It did a million. I got to eat some crow. I said there wouldn't be another game over a million. I said there would only be three. Right now, not so bad, but I said this week there wouldn't be a game over three or over a million, and there was. It was the Battle Hawks and the Broncos. <laughs> now, let's mind you guys right here, the final round of the Masters, an established organization that has been around for 100 years or so had 9.5 million viewers on CBS. These are all very telling things. These are all very telling things about this, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That people are watching this spring football. Are they in the numbers that we want? No, because it's a startup. Okay, but look, you were talking about hockey, who has been around for how long? And they barely pulled a million. And the XFL, the UFL almost beat them. I, I figured you were going to play the clips. Who's well, going to do that after the break? Oh, well, then are we taking the break now? No, we, we, we got a couple of minutes before we take Oh, it. gotcha. Okay. I don't know how you run stuff anymore, dude. Jesus. Just ask. ask. <laughs> you do like it in the other show. Come on. Just so ask, baby. Here's, the th here's the thing. Are these numbers really that bad or are they really that are they that impressive for it being on a Saturday as spring starts to happen things start to get better Arlington. Okay. Let me go ahead let me go ahead and say my piece on this. If you realize it these are they're never going to be the numbers that everybody expect because there are so many channels. I'll say this again, I'll say this from last year and I say this from the prior years before that. People watch a lot of stuff. It's you got so many channels and everybody's trying to get a rating from something from those. Right. A lot of people are not going to watch the um, UFL. Remember, everything is more geared towards the Midwest and the East Coast and, uh, and a bit of the South. Right. So hardly anybody on the West Coast is going to watch it. Right. But they all have their different choices of what they want to watch. Like the biggest programs on TV, of course, are the, the major things that have been established. They're going to be in the seven to eight figure range when it comes to viewership, right? Not even the biggest show on syndicated television is reaching eight, fig, uh, eight figures like it used to be. It's not the same viewership anymore. There's so many freaking channels. You have streaming now. People are going to that now. So, of course, these numbers are going to be skewed, but that's the way it is these days for, like you said, Dirty, a um, a startup stream uh, football league to get it anything over 500,000. I, I was the one that said this. Anything over 500,000 was considered good. Mm -hmm. And it still has remained. Granted that ESPN had a game. Man, I, I'm feeling bad for this week. I really am. 
I'm really feeling bad for this week here um, because they got two regional games and mm-hmm. then they have an, another network game, which is, of course, Memphis and St. Louis. We'll get to that in a little bit. And then um, the, the barn burner is the Houston game. Oh, well, here's That's- this clown. What's up, Battle Chickens? Yeah, uh, what happened? I thought, you, I thought you had to work. Look, hey, hey, listen. You know what happened? You know what happened, Arlington? See, you, you want to talk about these these battle? He wants to talk about these battle chickens. But I think we came down and we showed how we could run up and down the field like stealing Cadillac converters all over the uh the, the San Antonio Brahmas. We walked in, we walked in, and we cut off all their Cadillac converters, and we stole them. Just like we walked out and stole their victory from them. Yeah, don't get mad at me. I, I, I picked the Brahmas. All of you Texas teams denied me. For messing with people in the family of fuel. Don't do it. Back off. All On right, that right. note, we'll take a break. We're going to come back. We'll talk, touch a bit more about those games because I got some bones to pick, too. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more of the x Fan Show. Houston, we've triumphed. I've made it back to Earth with the cargo intact. The game-changing, time-sensitive payload is none other than the revolutionary energy flavor we've all been waiting for. Introducing Merc Mayhem, Cherry Limeade. Merc Clan played a crucial role in securing this energy flavor. And together... We've unlocked the future of power. Merc Mayhem is not just a drink. It's a statement. A fusion of relentless energy and bold flavor. The secret is out. Merc Mayhem is set to redefine the energy landscape, leaving ordinary drinks in its cosmic dust. Get ready for a taste explosion that matches Merc Clan's unparalleled power. Join the revolution, and let's unleash Merc Mayhem upon the world. Astronaut M signing off. Oh, you going? My bad, bro. My bad, bad, homie. Uh-huh. Go. Welcome back Go. to the X Fan Show. The A Train Arlington Lane, of course. That gentleman there, Spurs, Mister Eleven and One. Mister Eleven and One. Wait, who, who, who? Arlington, repeat that again. Who's Eleven and One this season with their picks? Leave me alone! All right. So now. Our next thing I want to touch on, Arlington, is this right here from the good doctor himself. None of these fans can talk shite because their teams can't even touch a thousand in attendance. So I will say this. I am a little I am a little disappointed in in the Texas teams. For the simple fact, don't get me wrong, I love the Texas teams, but I am a little disappointed. You know they all tote they all tote how they are a football state, right? Arlie said I've seen more uh, fans in attendance at a high school football game than I have in the UFL in Texas. Okay, uh, but here uh, the good doctor put up a good article, and this is uh, courtesy of well, it's not really courtesy of Gateway City because or uh, not Gateway City, but I seventy Media. The good doctor said I could use it. And if you go and go and read it, it's on I-70 Sports right now, media. But I want to break it down to the simple fact of right here. And it's this is he's got four problems of why he says that this. And right here, this is what number three. The problem that the UFL has faced is the fact that while the league was set up for the spring, when the NFL season is over, the NFL never really stops. This dominates all sport headlines with the owners' meetings that took place not too long ago. Before that, free agency opened up. 
and for football fans were clamoring for up to minute news on which power players went, not to include the draft coming up next week. Football fans are preoccupied with the teams that will take uh, that what players they will take all of that, and then it goes right here. This is and then it's a very long thing, and he says his final and fourth problem that the U.S. UFL faces, and he says this is merely his opinion. Arlington, and this is where I want to get your opinion on this. He says that his opinion is the lack of good quarterback play. You know, uh, this as was written before AJ stats came out. AJ is at like 600 and something yards now, right? Uh, Arlington, go, it's a, it's a very long article, so go to I go go to I seven the Inter- Interstate seventy sports media to read it, or you can go to Review STL and you can read it on there. That article will be up. Arlington, what is your take on that one? Because on on the good quarterback play, yes. I look at it like this: we understand that. If you want, you're not going to get top quarterbacks. You're not going to get the guys that are in the NFL. You got McCarron, right? But uh-huh. you're not going to get the uh, the guys that are right now like backups or third stream backups. You know, somebody that could p- potentially provide some excitement. You know, like uh, a Tyler Huntley uh, right now in the NFL. Uh, a Josh Rosen who we haven't got a chance to see at all. Would love to see what he's looking like if he were to play in the UFL. Um, you got, you only have 10 weeks, right? Uh-huh. And so you don't really have a lot of time to see what these quarterbacks are looking like, unless we had a full length season, like similar to the, the NFL. So you get what you pay for at, at this point, man. Mm-hmm. And the, it's going to take, like, uh, I think it was what Matt said, you need strong offensive lines and you know, already uh-huh. that we don't really we're starting to get better as the week progresses. And you got to understand, you're not going to get a guy that's not too many times is going to be throwing for 300 yards and getting four touchdowns per game, like in the UFL, because of how special teams is drawn. Okay, I'm going to take out that last comment because I didn't see it. But he says, I'm going to paraphrase it, Arlington, what he says. He goes, I don't want the NFL rejects and flunkies. Go after, and this is where I kind of agree with him. Go after these young guys out of college, like the lower tier D ones and the upper D two schools. But these are these are like uh, uh, I get that, but these guys still want to get a chance to play. And remember, I'll say it again, like I've said in in, in previous iterations of this show, that the coaches in the NFL want who they believe is the best for them. Right, they but don't Jersey, know. Or they Kevin. do not know. Right. They, now, Arlington, listen. we can say this, right? Let's let's agree to this. This, t- I mean, look, they are, what's up, Marco? They are pushing it as, the NFL has never said this is their developmental league. Never. The UFL keeps, the NFL has never said this is our developmental league. The UFL says this is our chance to get these guys to the next level. Okay? Right. They, want, they want to be accepted by the they Exactly. NFL. They so want to be why not? That. So that way they don't they don't get looked at. You have to do that as you, you're towing the line. You don't want to be looked at as a competitor. Correct. Because if you get looked at as a competitor, you're going to get killed by the NFL. Right, right here. I agree. That's always how it's been. Right there. I agree. I agree with that, that they should be partnering up with these HBCUs and stuff like that. Like here, Arlington, I'll give you a guy right now, and me and you argued this, argued this point, right? About a certain individual who got drafted out of Liberty College and is now sitting as a third string backup in the NFL on the Tennessee Titans, and that is Malik Willis. Malik Willis would be a perfect guy for this league. For this league. He would be a perfect quarterback for this league. Am I wrong or am I right? He'd be perfect for it. Yeah, of course he would. A guy like, regardless if you hate him or you love him, there's two, three guys. Tim Tebow would have been perfect for this league. Colin Kaepernick would have been perfect for this league. And Johnny 
football would have been perfect the for only this reason league. if it would have been perfect is if they would take the game seriously that's the only thing if they would take it and, and and not use it as a spectacle for their brands correct then i understand that's the way that you go you go because you want to play the game because you See? love the game that's what these guys are doing uh, matt it, it's uh, matthew I'm not we saying taking, bring Kaepernick taking, in. I'm not saying political stances. So it's not about that. that. Yeah, this isn't about political stances this or anything. I'm not saying bring Kaepernick player. in. I'm saying this is about football. The type of football that Colin Kaepernick played was not the type of football the NFL wants. Right. That's what it is. That's what it is. I Joe I, Jr. I get it. He couldn't make it. Okay. But I mean, listen. Let's really look at this. Yeah, and, and I get I get Eric, I get that you make more on the bench. But for a guy like Malik Willis, okay, here's what it is. And and listen, guys, go and read his article. I'm just paraphrasing his article. He says that if the UFL wants to compete and have better gameplay, I mean, let's really look at it. AJ McCarron is what 35 years old? About. Okay, he knows that his days in the NFL are pretty much done. He's only playing football for his kids to see it. Louis, yeah, right here. Jason Bean from K KU would be a perfect fit. And Scott, that is actually in his article also. That the coaching. Arlington. Now, Arlington, tell me if you're if I'm wrong or if I'm right. You should you should take some of these. Yes, Ed, I have seen more. I have seen more I have seen more fans in a high school Texas football game. Than I have at the UFL game. Arlington, you were in Texas. You lived in Texas, right? Some of them stadiums fit 20,000 in there. Am I right? And they'll get them. And they'll get them. Look, I will say that the UFL is just above college. Okay, listen, here's the thing about that. You want the, you, how difficult do you want these guys? To have it, to say, hey, we want it close to the NFL, right? I don't want it close to the NFL. But see, and exactly, that's and that's the thing. I don't. And plus, these guys, I'm trying to tell you now, these guys are going on that coaches in the NFL do not believe they're good enough. They don't know. They just that's what they believe. They don't know. They believe that that's their system. If they don't fit our squads, they don't belong on our teams. Now, you say, like, okay, well, what about Devontae Turpin? What about Brandon Hold on. Hold on. What? what are you doing? You're exactly right. If you don't fit the scheme of the NFL, you're not going to be in the NFL. But they still want to get them out there because exactly. they believe that they deserve to be out there in the NFL. Mm-hmm. That's 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 the whole thing. So you already know that as these weeks go, the game is going to progress. This is a mesh of talent that's been put together in a short amount of time to put together a, a legitimate league. You got to understand they don't have the same amount of time as okay. NFL players do when they have these uh these camps where they have he's saying it right here. and training camp. Jersey's wanting to ask the question, and let's be honest. Let's not be diehards for the the UFL. Let's not be diehards because of this. It's Arlington, because of the low amount of training that they get, these guys have gotten. They haven't got a lot of training. They were pretty much just rushed into the mix. Remember, there was a lot of questions if, if they were going to even play or not. They didn't even know. So that's the thing. Everything was thrust into them. So you're going to get what you get. You're going to get these types of stats, right? You're going to get this type of play so far. When they start meshing, it's going to be like, dang, I wish we could have started earlier. That happened in the XFL last year. See, that like right here. In the Uf uh, USFL. What, what Rig says, he goes, I'm not a fan of Cap, but I know he'd put asses in the seat. 
And that's the thing, Jeremy. They're not looking to put that flashy quarterback. And that's up to you whether you choose to watch it or not. But I'm telling you right now, it's because Again, guys, of this the was mesh. his opinion piece. This it's was a, his exactly. opinion it's piece. An op- it's a piece. So we're dissecting the opinion piece. This And this was another thing that he said it to do. Right here, Arlington. He said it about the coaching. That we need better. We, we need, and I know I've said it. Now you got to understand. Now, no, go ahead. Finish. Because these, these guys want shots. These guys want shots. Uh, these guys want shots at the league themselves, man. So, mm-hmm. so they're given opportunities in these realms, man. Matthew, like you're you, not going to get NFL coaches like this right. to come drop down into this. Matthew, you could say Kaepernick would turn people off, but I guarantee you Kaepernick wouldn't. He would not turn people off. Again, what football and what what football is, what sports is, is sports is about uniting fans. That's what fuel is. Fuel is about uniting fans. For you, when you walk through those gates, you forget about everything else. You forget about your political stance. You forget about your religious stance because you are one. And I guarantee you, you can say what you want. And I, again, I will say, forget about his political stance. Kaepernick would be... Kaepernick would put asses in the seats in the UFL. He's unemployed. Why? Because he makes about by choice. $10 million a by year. Choice. He, he makes about choice. $10 million a year to be an activist. He made that by See, choice. See, look. Right here, Rig says it. Sorry to say it, Matthew. He may turn some off, but I would be willing to bet the stands would start filling up. I'm not saying bring Kaepernick in. I'm just we're we're giving you an opinion piece, and we're giving you our opinions on that piece. Like I think there are some younger head coaches in football and college football that deserve a chance. Like right here, he said you need to get rid of Wade Phillips. Wade Phillips has that old mindset of football. Yes, it's a hypothetical statement that I'm making. Get rid of it. Get, I agree. Kind of get rid of Bob Stoops. Give some of these younger guys that that whole thing about Stoops, man. That about Stoops is is all we wanted to. See. He wanted to see what it was going to be like doing professional football. That's what that's about. But hey, let's take a time out. <coughs> We're gonna come back with more of the show right after this. You're listening to and you're watching the X Fan Show right here on Fuel Sports Network. <laughs> Say great, say great, taste. Yes, say great, taste. Uh, say. So beautiful. It was beautiful. Welcome back to this we, I mean, we got some people. We got some people riled up. Like right here. Yeah, look. Like Marquette King. A great punter. But yet. He's sitting in the UFL. He's not stuck. It's just right. It is for BS reasons, you know. And. You know, Donald De La Haye was seeing if he could, you know, get into the no, league no, Hold himself. on, hold on, hold on. Matthew, those aren't young coaches. 
I'm talking about getting. I'm talking. I listen. I would love to have June Jones back. Would love it. Would love to have June Jones back. But here, I'll give you an example. A guy like AJ Smith. I would love to see him as a head coach in the UFL. Love to see him as a coach in the U in the UFL. Love it. The you're you're talking Buckley wasn't a young head coach. Hein Wards, a not a young head coach. Rod Woodson, not a young head coach. It was their first year. I'm talking about going after some guys in Division I's, Division II schools. Maybe Division II schools. I would love to uh, see a, a Bobby Sloan. I, I disagree with that Texans one. Texans would love to uh, take a head coaching job in the UFL. Hey, and look, I guarantee you, A.J. McCarron, if this league is still going, A.J. McCarron will be a head coach somewhere in this league. Somewhere in this league. And you're right, Eric. It It, it is pay cuts. It, it, she's uh, Amanda goes voting Daddy Ed as a, as a head coach. You're right. right. It would be hay cu- It would be pay cuts for a lot of these guys. Hey guys, we're just looking. Look, and, and, and in this article, this is all an opinion piece written by one guy. We're just giving you our opinions. And like, like he says here, not all coaches are good. That's anywhere. <laughs> Listen. Anywhere. He'll hit. That ain't yeah, just right here. NFL. That's anywhere. Like, what was his name? Mike Leach. Mike, if he was still alive, Mike Leach, the innovative offense as he did at Texas Tech would be great for the UFL. Would be great for the UFL. Yeah, we understand. Hey, Again, guys, you-, you keep missing the point. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they should. I'm just telling you. You guys want to, you guys want to, we want to talk about how to improve this league and how to put more peoples in the seats. That's what we're talking about. More eyeballs on the product. More eyeballs right? on the product. More. Listen, there's a lot of things on this show that we have not said that you guys would be shocked by the play cut that a lot of these coaches took to play in this league and the things that they're doing to supplement that. There you go, right here. Need more sponsors, more money equals better coaches and talent. Right here. I mean, hell, look. Whether you, me and Arlington were talking about this yesterday. Or no, I was talking to the good doctor about this yesterday. Arlington, and you tell me. Love them or hate them. Do they make better coaches? Make better teachers? Do they? Because in this day and age, this day and age, uh, the kids are going a totally different way of how they learn and how they shit Louise Perez completely learned how to play quarterback on YouTube. On YouTube. Learned how to be a bowler on YouTube. So I'm just saying, <laughs> Coach Beck's not a young co- coach. Beck's not an old coach. Look what he's doing with St. Louis. Reggie Barlow's not a young coach. Look what he did in DC. Do it in DC. It's about the buy-in, man. It's, a, it's, it's about totally, buying into the product. It's about it's all, it's all about the buy-in. I'm gonna, all right. Let me go ahead and get to these highlights, and then we're gonna get back. To the conversation at hand. Here's Rough Next Panthers. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me explain something to you, Matthew. And you can talk to your buddy Brett because Brett will tell you. And I would love it, Arlington, if we could find our interview with Kurt Hunzinger that we did right after the COVID shut down the UF the XFL. Okay. I didn't see LaPrez was good. LaPrez. Perez has over 6,000 yards in spring football. And everything, it wasn't his fault to begin with, so stop it. That's the dumb. Right here, what he says right here, we need to support the league, quit bitching about the schedule, uniforms, etc. We all should be happy we have football and get out to the games. Hell, the Predator and couple have I have already traveled over 4,000 miles to go to four games. You can't read 5,700 from 4,000? Whatever, shut up. Anyways, I'm going back to Matthew. Arlington, and you can vouch for this, and Matthew, call your buddy Brett, he'll tell you. 
no matter what happened in 2020, there would not have been a 2021 season for the XFL. It was done. Hey, and it after was, that note, his rough neck done. Panthers. His rough ask neck your Panthers. boy, ask your boy Brett Arlington. Don't 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 sit here and try to shake this off. You know it because we talked to, we talked to people and they said no matter what had happened, the season was done after 2020. Did yep. they? His rough neck Panthers. Is working. Here we go. Brian is on. That's Steve Blandino of the U.S. Army Command Center. Sydney showing the legs. He's in. Houston wanted to spark, and they get the spark. Ready, ready, ready. Got it. Perry will scramble. He's got room. Tough guy. Touchdown for the Ivy League man. Sewell with the pressure from inside. Perry gets away with him. Low throw. Sims is up. He's scooting. Sideline. He's already got one from 76. Give him another. Goodbye, Marcus Sims. Ready, ready. six. Perry showing the legs again. And there's that Ivy League speed. The Brown. You know what? Rig made me mad. <laughs> Rig made me mad because I was ready to go in on a few people. Rig, Look, I can tell you I this. You. I don't like you. ain't you. going on your derailment yet. Be quiet. I'm you not. Going I'm not going to go on it at all, man, because of what oh, Rig okay. said. Here, like Michael Rig, says Rig right here, me. it's the coach's approach and philosophy. Age doesn't determine the coach's success. I agree with you. Like Scott says right here. Uh, I think Beck has really has a great understanding of what the league wants to accomplish and has done his job selling it to the St. Louis team. I absolutely agree with that. And, hey, and, and because of that, here's the success that Beck showed on this past week. Because it's only a two or three yard gain you need. You saw the true line. No measurement necessary. The true line says first down. And on first down, Butler waltzing in. Touchdown, St. Louis. 20 yard strike. So McCarron run. The marathon drive ends here. Touchdown at Memphis last week. Garbers 4-4 on this drive. Hands to McFarland here around the left side. Touchdown! Brings him into the red zone. It's Sailors around the left edge. Sailors finds a hole and walks in. Touchdown, Battlehawks. 19-yard sprint. Yeah! Yeah! Let's go! That's y'all. That's y'all, Coach Coach Anthony Beck. That's you right. saw thirty-one twenty-four. So, oh, I, had, I had notes for this stuff. Right, right. Are we gonna talk she about goes, the game? Oh, but the, the X like fan them. show, the X fan show is the show about the fans. All right, and so that's what it's about. Some, so they dictate it. What I, I it blame is right you here. for this. I blame you for this. I I know. I know. You to blame for this. Look this right here. Episode. Matt says, and that is my point. How many failures till people say the heck with spring football? I will say. Stay no matter what. What have we going? I need you to learn how to TV talk, man. Are, huh? Listen, you to learn how to talk, dude. You're absolutely right. And here is the thing. This is why I am tired of hearing about attendance. Take St. Louis out of this, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to the good doctor because he wrote a piece, and at the very end of his piece, he talked about players that could make the NFL, and he brought up. DS11, he brought up Aitman from the Battlehawks. I'm going to throw in some more. They're all Battlehawks that you mentioned there, right? Right, but I'm going to throw in some more. Can you throw that Jake Wednesday? Etz, Jake you Betts. That Jake okay. Betts could Bates. do it. Bates okay. could do it. I think Sinnott could find somewhere in an NFL roster. Sims, the receiver for Michigan, can find himself somewhere on a roster. There's a lot of young talent in mm -hmm. this league. I'm going. I'm going to hurt that. 
hurt that comment that you just said. It's all up to those coaches that they if they choose to bring them on their teams and they match their systems. If they don't, guess where they're going to remain? In the UFL. Correct. Exactly. So it doesn't it doesn't matter at this point because they they only they already I, look down they, the NFL already looks down at leagues that's not the NFL and they're only going to pick the people that they believe is what works for their team. Again, I brought in Brandon Aubrey and Kevonche Turpin for a reason, and Jerry Jones is Jerry Jones, and he's going to do what he does all the time, right? He brought yeah. them in for chances on them, and they both were Pro Bowlers. Yep. It's all about the system. Does it work for their system? If it doesn't work for their system, they're not going to play there. And that sucks. Oh, God. That's horrible. It's horrible. Oh, yeah. Arlington, I'm it's getting horrible. irritated. I'm getting irritated. All right. I'm going to talk about the games. I don't know about you. you can sit we ain't there talking about the want. games. We, everybody everybody, everybody else has talked about the games and all that. We're Listen. about to show about the fans. We, we okay. still got to make if our picks. If it's about to show about the fans, then guess what? As a fan of the UFL, I'm sick and tired of how these teams are not looking at the clock during the game. Yep, it's my derailment time. Yep, I thought I wasn't going to do it, but it brought – thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I want these folks to understand this. When there's two minutes left in the ball game or it's two-minute warning that you got coming up, I need you to pay attention to the clock, okay? Pay attention to the clock because that happened in Houston and it happened again in Arlington. What were y'all thinking about when y'all decided not to take the ball to the two minute warning? You're not seconds off the clock, right? So that way it keeps the teams from getting a better opportunity at scoring. Houston had that problem against Michigan. Arlington had that problem against D.C. You up freaking 10 points. With 2.06 to go, you stop the freaking clock. Why? The clock is your friend. You're trying to end the game, not extend it. And that's what bothered me. Y'all know the rules of these things. You know them. And you're going to sit here, and, and that's why you lost. That's why you lost. That's why Houston lost against Michigan. They were horrendous. When they ended the trick plays, what in the hell were y'all thinking about doing trick plays in the red zone when you have red zone problems? Just stick to the game plan. Stay away from the trick plays. They're god awful. Stop it. Stop it. Stop that madness. That's unbelievable. I'm I'm, I'm floored. I'm floored. Oh, and our broadcasters. Our wonderful, wonderful broadcasters of the league. Some of y'all need to remember what the rules are in the league. And your energy, I love it. But let's keep, let's stay chill on some of the things that's being said out here in these games. You're going to sit here and tell me that somebody deserves a statue next to Barry Sanders. Oh, you can't just be playing by saying it. That came as a thought to your mind, and you wanted to present it out there to the people. Drew Carter, amazing job. Amazing job. I love them and Sam Acho. Them together, when they did Battle Hawks Brahmas, perfect. I like that group. I love that core. But some of y'all, let's chill out on some of the references, and let's chill out because this is a league, and we want to all see them succeed. That's my derailment. I'm done. <laughs> now, I, I, I keep as, as you're saying that, I keep reading this. I keep looking at everybody, and they're talking about the attendance. They're talking about all this, this BS, right? Oh, one last thing. Refs can't make the game interesting. Not y'all. Not the UFL ones. Don't make the game interesting. You're not Angel Hernandez. Leave it, leave it, leave that alone. Don't do that. Look, you you guys, look, here's the thing we got to realize. Another thing that he said in this article, and this goes back to it, is that the marketing of how bad the marketing has been for the UFL. And by the fans, we keep harping on attendance. Let me tell you something. Does it matter 
the attendance or whatever, because attendance don't win you games. Attendance don't win you championships. It, it, it doesn't. We need to quit harping on that. What you need to do is when you're talking to somebody, because Arlington, me, you, and Daddy Ed did this when we were in Michigan. When we went to Michigan, the hotel, the pink hotel we say that they didn't know anything about the UFL, did they? Nope. But we talked about it, and what did they say? They're like, ooh, that sounds interesting. I'm going to go. I'm going to check gonna it go out. check out a game. I'm going to check it out. That's what you guys need to do as fans. That's what we need to do. It not, was not hard to market because they had four months, four months after the merger happened to market this. Four months to market this. Hey, there are some people that want to go to a game that cannot go to a game. Four months to all right. market all of this. You okay, have, he also talks about The Rock and how busy The Rock is and all that. We complain and, 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 and bitch about The Rock. Guess what, UFL? Find a new face then. Find a new face. All right. Get somebody out there talking about the UFL on a daily basis. Hey, we got one more time out. We're going to take a quick one. No, we ain't taking no time out. We ain't taking no, no, listen. It's a quick one, dude. Right here. Quick break. Like what he says right here, wear your merchandise every day. Listen, this is the thing, people. We are their marketing. We are their marketing. The more negative you put out there, the worse it looks for us. The people here in St. Louis talk about, oh, we're a St. I saw somebody post on Facebook. We're a Saint. We're we're a football town. Guess what? No, the NFL is laughing at us. The NFL is laughing at us because they're laughing and saying you guys can't even fill the dome. You can't even get fifty thousand in the dome for a minor league football league. Is how they look at it. You can't even get fifty thousand in the dome for a minor league game. The NFL is laughing at us. I can tell you this. The marketing is all around St. Louis. It's on this buses. It's at every single McDonald's. It's on billboards. All of that. But we still can't get 50. And don't sit there and say, St. Louis, uh, it's not really a baseball town and it hasn't been a baseball town in a few years. <laughs> hasn't been a baseball town in a few years because the Cardinals have been terrible. So don't sit there and tell me, oh, well, there's a cap. Nope, there's not a cap. There's not a cap. Because if they could sell tickets at any one of these markets, guess what they're going to do? They're going to sell that ticket. They're going to print them because it's digital. It's digital. It ain't paper anymore. There's no cap in this in this league on these teams. So people are going, well, St. Louis sold out. No, St. Louis hasn't sold out because the last I checked, Arlington, get back on here. The last I checked, Arlington, the Dome of America Center holds 67,000 people. All right. Have you seen 67,000 people in the dome? No. Right. Right. There is no cap, people. I'll go more in it on, on, on Wednesday with B-Hawk Live. Yeah, you're right. That You're right. They, it does come first. But you want to you, – you guys get out there, buy the tickets. I'm challenging everybody. Yep, not since, not since 2020. 2023, it hasn't been a, it hasn't been a football town. I told you, we're going to the last game of the season in Mich in Memphis. St. Louis fans, let's go. Let's go. It's a four-hour drive. Let's do it. Let's go support the Memphis Showboats. Let's do it. Get over the tribalism. All of these teams. If you're in Texas, you live on within five hours of all of your stadiums. Five hours in all of your stadiums. You could travel to all five of three of them in a five-hour period. Go. Go to the game. Go. Texas, you want to talk about how you're this? We're football. We love football. We love football. But you'll put 20,000 in for a high school game. But you won't even put twenty thousand in for the for the Roughnecks or the Renegades or the Brahmas 
You ain't a fishball. Andrew, I'm not sa- Andrew, I'm not saying everybody's got to travel, but if you can do it, I'm not saying that. Watch all the games on TV, that's even better. But no, Texas, no, no. That sounds like excuses to me. What? Well, no, but he works on the weekends. Andrew works on the weekends. He works he gets, on the weekends. Okay. So how's he gonna travel? How's he gonna travel? Keep talking. Yeah, right here. Right here. It's crazy. It's crazy how they say Texas is 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 football, but Arlington was barely empty. Hey, look at Rig. Houston fans, I have one extra ticket for this. You can come sit with the super fans. I'm willing to let you have it and sit with us. Right here, I just draft. I'm not saying everybody's got to travel, but he, Texas. I'm challenging Texas. Er, the great start. Er, we like football. Er, 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 football. 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 Go to the games then. If you can put them in on a Friday night lights, then do it for the UFL, you bombs. All right, now I'll go to pray, Carlington. I'm done. Me back in this choice for that game. I love you. Hit for my wins, I need my hands This life is real, don't they pretend Came off the fence Dog, the dog has the dog has now uh simmered down. We're back on the X Man show. <laughs> All right, we gotta do these picks before we get out of here, man. Oh my god, we gotta do these picks before we get out of here. All right, we got uh Memphis, St. Louis, uh DC and Birmingham, Michigan, San Antonio, and of course Arlington and Houston to close out. You say your picks first since you're eleven and no, 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 no. No, no, that's not how that works. Andrew, no, dude, because you're going to. Andrew, I just said. Andrew, I just said. You have two jobs. I just said, Arlington, did I not say that? Yes, we defended you, man. We, we defended you, bro. I know. I know what I you I was did. giving you crap. I was giving you crap about it. Yeah. See, you look right here. I know we know your situation. Same to our Brahma fans. Horns Forwards, Horns Forwards podcast will be giving two tickets for this weekend's game. Hit her up. No, no. Sabrina, uh, Sabrina, I love you, but that dome ain't going to be filled if the Battle Hawks aren't in that championship game. Stop it. You know it as well hey, as I. Do. She knows something that we don't. That's what I'm saying to that. She knows. Right, so you already let's get to the picks as it is because this guy right here is a eleven and one, and well, go that ahead. guy right there. Well, go, is, well, um, Almighty Maestro, please go first with Memphis. No, no, no. That's Give not how pick, that sir. works. Yes, it does. Because you're the no. maestro around here, man. I already got my picks for the week. Okay, well, let's go. What? Let's go to the first game. No, I'm just, I'm just going to go down the line because we ain't got that much time. Yeah, we do. It's our network. And there's nothing on after us. <laughs> oh, it uh, works. Memphis, uh, St. Louis. St. Louis, of course. Okay. Oh, by the way, there's a new show starting Wednesday at 8 o'clock. The 18. The 18 with RC. RC. It's Amanda. Yeah. Amber and RC. It is yeah. a woman's perspective of football, so make sure you guys tune in tomorrow at yes. seven o'clock. No pressure. And they'll be talking about all the things no that pressure. you know that we do for charity and all that. All Those right, yeah, I'm going St. Louis, Arlington. Yeah, I bet you are. Who are you getting okay. the next one? DC and Birmingham. Now that's you, bro. Go. All you're gonna do is copy off of my picks. Are you sure? Okay, DC and Birmingham, Birmingham. Well, of course. That's dumb. See. I told you all you're going to do is no, go. No, I'm not an it. idiot. All right, what's the next game? I'll go first. What's the next game? Michigan, San Antonio. With Cook is being out, and you got Jake Bates with that 70-yard field goal leg that I have a feeling coming in, right? Uh, you're going to another dome to do it. They don't. I'm going, I'm going Michigan. The Quentin Dormady era has begun. He's going to be QB. Uh, hopefully, he's QB1, man. It, he, it would be silly to not go with Quentin Dormady. Uh, but even with the whole quarterback situation, I still think San Antonio pulls it out at home. 
Listen, I'm not betting against that leg yet until until he misses a field goal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, the league, this league has been all about kickers. You meant Garbers, not cookies, dude. Oh, Garbers, yeah, my bad. DC with an upset. Ooh, ooh, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> all right, what's the last game, Arlington? Arlington and Houston. I'm oh, is you, are these the losers? No. Uh, yeah, they're, oh, they're 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 neither one of these two teams have won a game because they're both losers. Right. So I'm they're going both with, losers. I'm going with the Renegades. Mark Thompson's not back, correct? Yep. Yeah, I'm going Arlington. Go with the oh, Renegades. I feel no, you know what? I feel bad for that. Hey, folks, please watch that last game. Please watch that last game on Sunday. It's the only game of the week. Weekend I'm not, on Sunday. I, you know what? Nobody should watch that game. Dude, what are you doing? Nobody should watch that game. You should not watch. Hey, go watch Arlington and Houston on Sunday. It's going to be a barn burner. I guarantee you that's how it's going to be. Hey, listen, I want the bums fighting at the junkyard. I need them there. All right? Just listen to me. Go ahead and watch it. It's going to be fine. I promise you that. All right, folks, that'll wrap things up for this edition of the show this week. Hey, anything you got to say before we leave, Dirty? Yeah, it's like two bums fighting at a junkyard. You're right, David. That's what it is. Make sure you watch the junkyard. Make sure you watch the bum fight. Go watch the bum fight. Golly. For you to be saying, dude, we got a big meeting coming up. And you Look right here. Crazy. Right here. Right here he says, don't watch it. Go to the game. I agree. Go to the game. Don't watch it on TV. Go to the game. Go to the game and watch the, the basement dwellers battle it out. Yes. Watch Go it. to the game and watch the basement dwellers battle it out. It's fine. And on that note, we're going. Hey, make sure you tune in to everything going on on the Fuel Sports Network. Get it on your app, but Roku TV and whatnot. That's right. Jersey said, look at that. Kevin's all mad. So hey, the league. I'm it. Maybe we'll have a season yeah, too. I get it. Exactly. But we gone. We out of here. Shut up. Don't say no more, Dirty. All right? Goodbye. Goodbye.